I am going to show you how to fit a 600 watt bi-directional DC-DC converter, aka the Clayton Power Supercharger to your Clayton Power LPS2. Why would you fit a supercharger? It doubles your ability to charge from the vehicle. So it will take it from around 550 watts. I typically get around sort of 595 watts out of the LPS itself with the inbuilt DC-DC charger. Uh, but with the additional one, you end up with over a thousand watts of charging coming from your vehicle. And before I begin, I'm not an auto electrician. I am not a qualified electrician. I am simply one of these people that does a lot of work on their vehicles and their home themselves. I've taught myself through reading, watching videos online, uh, and doing exactly what I'm doing, which is just sharing information. This is how I fit the units. There's clear directions from Clayton Power. As a little family business, Ahoy Leisure also sell these units. We were one of the first people to kind of make this a viable alternative to Victron and Renergy and things like that because I've been doing the videos and showing people how to use it. I think before I was doing my videos, Clayton were really uh, good on the sort of commercial and contract side of things, but not so uh, big on the leisure. There were a few people that had tried it, but they've not really done the breadth of uh, content and information. And another great thing that we've done is we've introduced other people, other uh, resellers into the fold. Uh, and try to provide advice and things like that where possible. We offer same or next day delivery nationwide. If you try to find our website, we don't have one yet. We will eventually have one on ahoyleisure.com, uh, which is rather embarrassing because uh, one of my businesses is a branding and website agency. <laughs> so I should really have one. Uh, cobblers, children, never have any shoes and all that. Best thing to do is either give me a call 07905 949435 or ping me an email, mark at ahoy.co.uk. I get back to you straight away, day or night, uh, and we will send out same day or next day. We typically offer the very best prices. Um, we've got discounts across uh, like club membership and things like that, uh, but give us a call. Uh, we've also had customers come down and we've helped with where to position the unit. Um, people have come down and had a look around my van. In this video, I'm using the supplied cable kit. Um, which I think is the best way to kind of show you how everything goes together. Um, and also, a lot of the customers are buying cable kits now. When we first started off, a lot of people were kind of making their own wiring kits, but with the price of wire going up, you've got some cheaper Chinese um, connections and things like that, whereas everything in the kit is of a really high standard. So it's totally up to you, but we do have the kits in stock. If you're having the LPS without the supercharger, it's one type of cable kit. And if you're having it with the supercharger, there's a different cable kit with a few more uh, wires, connections, um, fuses and things like that. So without further ado, I'll talk you through it. You will need a supercharger, the cable kit, and the Clayton LPS2. Katie says I go into too much detail. Do I? Leave a, leave a comment below for the algorithm. And for the supercharger itself, you have uh, your data connection, you have uh, an out, a ground and an in. And on top you have a series of LEDs uh, that light up to show you the different things that the actual unit is doing. Of which, rather than me boring you to death by going through every single LED function, we have it here in the instructions. With the Clayton LPS2 itself, uh, if you've watched my other videos, you'll get these nice big clear instructions. And right at the bottom, you will get, and by the way, I'll put a link to the bottom. I've got a sort of PDF download where I've got these instructions with one of my fitting videos. Uh, if you need to send it to your fitter or if you just need it in one neat, neat place. But within the instructions itself, you've got information there telling exactly what to do. And then you've got a, a wiring diagram here. And then at the top, it tells you all the tools that you're gonna need, sizes and everything like that. In your pack, you will have a big clear plastic bag full of uh, the uh, mega fuse housing, your pigtail fuse, uh, and your actual mega fuses. And then you will have your cables. One thing to note with the cables, the telltale sign of what actually connects to the supercharger is some of the cables are, are flat like that in terms of their um, shoe connectors. Some are at 90 degrees, so the ones at 90 degrees are the ones that go onto the supercharger, like so. 
you get two data connectors like that, and then you get you get three of these uh, 90 degree uh, shoes as well. And it's worth noting because I've had a few customers ask about this. The all these connectors and everything within the supercharger pack are in this. I'm sure you'll suss it out, but a few people have asked. It's hidden in this little piece of cardboard here. Right, so I've been thinking of different ways in which I can show this to you in the simplest way possible. And I think the way I'm gonna do it is on the floor. So I'm gonna put my camera high up and I'm gonna sort of set everything out on the floor as if it's almost like a diagram. I think the main aim of this video is just to guide you through the different connections and why. So I think that's probably gonna be the best way to do it. So uh, yeah, over to the floor once I figure out how the hell to do it. So over to Sergeant Major Stringer with his pointing stick to show you how to attach the supercharger. Right, you've got your positive, which goes to your battery, through to a mega fuse. Notice that these two connections are on this side. This just has the one connection through to your battery. Um, you don't always have to take the negative off on your battery. Sometimes you'll find that there's a little um, additional kind of like lug which you can, you can connect to. So just keep an eye out for that on your positive on your battery. Um, one side of this will come out and round into the in on your supercharger. The other side of this will come up to the plus on the DC in. The negative on your DC in will come out and go to a common ground. Now to explain common ground, because it can catch people out, Common ground on a vehicle, uh, anywhere on the chassis, so anywhere where there's good continuity, i.e. there's good um, ability for the electricity to run through it. Uh, sometimes you'll have common lashing points on a vehicle that you can use, but you can make your own by just simply drilling a hole where there's good continuity on the actual uh, framework itself or on the body of the vehicle. Sanding off a bit of the paint and then utilizing a spring washer and a nut and bolt uh, and then you can put your um, your shoe connected to that to that uh, bit on the on the van. Donald's off. So just to explain that, because I know it can catch people out, you know, negative ground that kind of thing. You'll find videos online that explain that much better than me. But just for the purposes of this video, that's the way I want to explain it. On the supercharger ground, you'll come out and then go up to the DC out negative. On the supercharger out you'll travel around into the mega fuse and then you'll carry on up into the DC out positive. I've changed this around a little bit on the instructions just because it makes it a bit clearer to, to show you and I think it probably, the, the instructions on Clayton probably could benefit from this, but just, just so I can explain it to you more clearly. As I say, you've got the out from the supercharger, that goes into the mega fuse and then up on this side up into the DC out pos uh, positive. And then this side, this will then travel out and then go into your fuse box, i.e. your blade fuses. Um, and then what you'll then also have on your, uh, on, on your blade fuse is then you'll have a negative as well. And then all your connections will have a positive and negative, which will connect to your fuse box with different size, uh, different gauge fuses. Um, now, this fuse should be no more than 180 amp, uh, but should be sized according to how many devices you've got on here. So to be crystal clear, this will be your fuse box that will go out to your max air fan, your fridge, uh, whatever else for 12 volt basically, uh, water pumps and all, all that kind of stuff. But that's, that would be where that was connected. Um, the next bit to explain is the, the ignition on. So this is the thing that tells the LPS that there's power coming from the alternator. Uh, you get in the wiring kit a blue cable, which is crimped with an inline crimp. And then you get a pigtail fuse. Uh, and the way that works, again, you've probably seen it in some of other videos, you take the fuse out, you'll push this piggyback fuse in, and then you'll put the fuse back into it, uh, it's, it's kind of self-explanatory, but that's how that works. And then this will come round into your C1 connection on the back of your LPS, which uh, comes with a screw, 
and uh, is pre-made with a little shoe uh, for it and everything. So that's, again, dead, dead easy to do. For the date connection, uh, these are called an M12 connector, I believe. You unscrew the plastic housing, again, dead simple. And you'll find with the pin, uh, if you just check in the instructions, see the orientation of this piece there, uh, you'll find that number two is there. So it'll go, you'll strip it and then put it in there, screw it from the top there. And then the dead simple, uh, once you've done that, screws in like so. And then at the back, uh, the neck with the screw, you've got this which compresses it. And then once that goes, once that's through into there, once that screws, uh, it creates a sort of compression inside there, which will keep it nice and snug. And with these, you'll see there's a sort of piece missing at the top, which then you'll see usually at the bottom of there. There's a bit missing. And once you feel it's hit that bit that's missing, uh, you can then tighten that up. Uh, you can tie it by hand and then you can get a screw and don't over tighten this. Um, it's obviously just to stop it coming loose, um, but that's the way that's the way it connects. And it's the same on the on the bottom of the supercharger. You've got these right angle connections with the uh, the spring washer and then the nut on the top. They are a little bit fiddly these, so you're going to need a, a socket uh, to get in there and tighten it. But that's the way they connect. It's dead dead simple. You have got a jump start functionality on this, but to be honest, I've never used it because got, I've got a jump start uh, functionality on the remote. To say you've got the LEDs uh, to show you how it works. It's working the same way. It's effectively just telling uh, the, the systems that when the engine is on and live, same as what's uh, happening with the C1 connection, um, to, to work. Um, so yeah, so dead simple to pin number two, these instructions in the actual supercharger itself. Uh, you unscrew these and then uh, you connect it and then screw it tight and then you just screw these two together and that gives you that connection. So a few things to mention that are sometimes missed or sometimes get customers uh, a bit confused on how it works. The supercharger, the additional uh, DC-DC charger, will only kick in once your battery capacity has gone down to 29%. Um, so if it's 29% or lower, it will kick in and I believe it stays on until about 80%. So if you're wondering why your supercharger's not kicked in yet, it will be for that reason. You do need to get your battery capacity below that amount to see it working. Another plus to point out with the Clayton unit as well is the DC-DC charger. In the specifications, they will typically say uh, it's, it'll put out 45 amps, which uh, times 12 volt is around 540. Um, I've been finding it puts out around 590. Um, and then with the supercharger as well, when that's kicking in, you're getting even more. So it's, it's over a thousand watts. So you're getting a lot of power and it's recharging that battery really quickly. As I say, I don't make any money from doing these videos. They're very niche, so I'll probably never ever make any money from them in terms of YouTube or anything like that. The only way I make my money is by you buying the Clayton units from me. So if you like my content and you want to give back a little bit, um, I sell at a really good price and I make a little bit of margin uh, to kind of pay for these videos. Uh, videos coming up, FAQs, I get loads of questions and there's been loads of little niggles and things that happen that I've been able to kind of smooth out uh, with customers and, and dealing with certain things, especially if fitters get stuck. Um, you know, a lot of the fitters fit Victron and different things like that. Uh, in general, they're pretty easy fitting, the instructions are dead clear, my videos are dead clear, um, but there's just a few little things that would be great to answer in an FAQs. Also, I get asked loads of questions on the additional batteries, so I'll cover that in the FAQs video, uh, which is coming next. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Right, so I think I've pretty much lost the plot. I may be overthinking it. <laughs> But I'm trying to lay it out on the floor for you, point at the diagram type of thing. It's like a live diagram. This, this, is, this is called the Stringer diagram. This, this is a new invention. I've also found out that my camera is amazing and is brilliant for this type of use and is way better than Kate ever was on the camera side of things. <laughs> if you notice on any of these that I've not screwed them in properly, you can stick up your backside. It's Sunday night. I'm trying to get this done for you. I get nothing from this other than the small amount of uh, markup on the Clayton units that I sell. So if you moan that nothing's tightened up properly, whatever, this don't start in the comments. 
Otherwise, I'll be at you with my stick. Have you seen this, Kate? It's good. This is like some kind of new, like, I don't, I don't know if it's a scary movie or... What? It's a scary movie. The amount of frigging creases I've got in my, in my face. My fault is I've not been kind to me, I tell you.